Hello and welcome back to Municipal Matters here on your TV. I'm your host, York Bellsmith. Still to come on this episode, we'll be talking with Chief Dave Mowat from Aldervale First Nations. But right now we're joined by Chief Lori Carr from Hiawatha First Nations. Lori, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to have a chat at a time that is, it, it's a time of change right now, I think, in our community. It is, yeah, it definitely is with the, um, especially with the findings of the 215 little ones. Talk to us about your in initial reaction uh, to, to word that, that, that these graves have been found. It was anger. I'd say my first one was definitely anger, um, a vast range of emotion. So it went from anger to sadness, to grief, to um, how can we help? What can we do? Um, and then very much goes back to anger. Uh, yeah, a definite, a, a natural reaction. What, do you, what are your thoughts on what you've seen from, from those outside of, of First Nations peoples, uh, people like, like myself? I mean, there seems to be a lot of positive conversation about there being change and there having to be change. Yes, I, I am seeing that in the support of our allies. And we, we always knew, our survivors told us this was happening. And they they talked about the treatment in the in the residential schools and and all the ones all across Canada, and um, it almost is like that it would always get brushed under the rug or it wasn't believable that this could happen in Canada, in our country in the, in this country of Canada, and so now that there's evidence. Um, then it, I think it makes it more believable for people that this really did happen. And, and this horrific history is still our reality. And, and you, you know, you probably couldn't meet an Indigenous person who isn't a first, second, third generation um, person as, of a survivor. And so when, when that happens, and that's why we talk about the trauma that we just, it, it re, we relive it. And, um, it just we feel we call the, uh, everyone our brothers and sisters and we feel that for for them all across Canada and I remember in 2007 or 8 I was uh, in Edmonton and I was at a, the museum there and they had a First Nations area set up and they had a book in a, it was encased in glass and it was a residential school book and it was just open faced so um, there was like 38 lines in this book and across the top, it would say uh, name, date of birth, uh, date of entry. And then at the very last one um, in column was date of death. And out of the 38, 19 of those children had died at on one page, one book of all those residential schools. And for date of death, all it had was dead in capital letters, the word written dead. And so I just, I remember even at that moment, you know, tearing and, and, and then saying my prayers and just, you could feel that all through you. And it's just to, you know, what about their families? Did they know? And so, you know, and then you bring us to, to last week, you know, and, and I can't imagine for the families, um, what they're feeling or, or even, and the survivors, but just as, Indigenous communities as First Nations across Canada, you can't help but but feel because because someone from your community has gone to residential school. Uh, and we're not talking about history from a long, long time ago. The last residential school, if I'm not mistaken, closed in Canada in 1996. Yes, yeah, it was in Saskatchewan. It closed in 96. And exactly that could have been me. It could have been my parents. It could have been my children. They, they could have had to have gone to um, those schools or and then and part of dealing with the residential schools was also the 60 scoop where then Ontario and the Children's Aid Society came in and and based that's the overall catchphrase is they basically scooped our children and and adopted them out and so you know it's you there's this huge ongoing history of of our children being taken and and that's the piece of this is where you know we need we have our own um um 
Child and Family Services. There's several First Nations within that. And, um, and it took us over 20 years to get here, but we're here. And um, it's that piece of, you know, we looked after our, our children for minute, for, for forever until the 1800s when they, when, when the first residential school came, you know, so we know how to take care of our children and, and why the government thought that we didn't, you know, um, and, and how did they take care of them, right? They didn't, you know, they abused them mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and sexually. And, 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 and they, they killed them. Like that's, you know, I'm, I'm about putting honesty on the table and it was a genocide of our people and our culture. And I can't, I just, it, it's, and it's a reality, honestly, as I said earlier, that we still live today because we have children still in care than we did more than in the height of the residential school. So these are all, and, and the federal government is fighting our children in court under the human rights. And it's, why are you, why are you still doing that? And where's your accountability and, and where's the church's accountability? And, 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 you know, you look at those graves and, you know, that's a mass murder. And, and so why aren't those people that worked in those schools being held accountable or brought to justice? And so there's so many more questions that, that need to, you know, be answered and, 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 and that's where our allies come in, you know, to help us with, you know, you know, write your MP, write your MPP, write the churches, right? You know, th these these pieces need to be um, dealt with like they would under any other circumstance of justice in Canada. Ken Lutz is one site at, at one residential school. Do you believe that there's more and the other schools should be searched? Absolutely. There are more. Uh, uh, we've heard the stories. Again, our survivors have told us, and I, we've actually had um, non-Indigenous people who've lived by those residential schools. And, and one um, of those people used to live here in Hiawatha. And she had said that, I can tell you where they used to throw the bodies. And so you know, we, we know and, and we will find many more if you, if you, you know, there was over 130 residential schools, even a few times that by 200. That's a lot of our people. That's a lot of our little ones who now would have been our, our, our elders and they, they were our language keepers and knowledge keepers. And, and they would have had, of all the generations they each would have had, we've lost all those generations of people. It's, and, it's, it's really hard to, to wrap my head around that. Mm -hmm. Are yeah. you confident at all that, that these, the other residential school sites will be, uh, will be searched? I'm, I'm not confident. I, if, if, it's, if it's left to the First Nations, I would be confident. Yes. Um, if it's left up to the governments, no. Um, I, I had seen on the news, um, Prime Minister Trudeau um, was making comments about the church being accountable. And then I seen um, the uh, message from uh, the Pope and, and it wasn't an apology. It wasn't even accountability. And, and he apologized to the Canadian population for, for the, the acts. Well, why are you apologizing to the Canadian population? Why aren't you apologizing to the Indigenous people who those acts were committed against? And so again, then you have that moment of where anger steps in. You know, nobody wants to, the, the people that should be taking accountability are not taking accountability. And so again, that's where we need our allies to come in and help us support this. You know, the majority of um, Canadians have been um, learning and have been um, wonderful in, in helping to support. And a lot of people have reached out to me and asked how they could help. So that is it. Like that is amazing to see that support and and it's it is greatly appreciated because it gives and, and it gives that 
that understanding of our history you know it's not just something that we were saying and oh well you know this is the lives our people lived and so you know um again i i really just can't say thank you enough you're supposed to come where our teachings our seven grandfather teachings are are what we what we are to live by and you know when you we talk about these our, those little ones in the residential schools and the survivors, we're always supposed to come from a place of love and warmth and support. And so we do that. And, um, and that's how we're reaching out to our allies is to come from that place and say, please, you know, like, you know, thank you for your support. We're grateful for that. And it's, it's a place where we all need to work together. You mentioned allies a couple of times. Who do you consider your, your allies? Uh, the general Canadian population who, who are, um, who get it, who understand, who, who, who feel that, um, there will be some people who won't, um, if there are any government officials who, who have come out, we did have, um, some uh, government officials come out, um, from the federal and provincial government. Um, who have reached out to uh, for support or to see how they could help. And so that will come from action. You know, um, all each government is responsible um, of the government because each of those parties have been, each of those parties have been um, in 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 house during those, you know, from 1830 or 1828 was the policy up to 1996. All those level, all those various parties have been in the house and, and they still continue to fund them till 1996, the schools. So, you know, I need, we need to see action. It's time to just stop appeasing and say, and saying, you know, all, all the right words, but you need action behind them. And so that's when I'll con that's when I'll look at these are the allies they have we have because they're actually providing action. It's up to all of us to provide that, right? Uh, now you mentioned about the searching of, of the other residential school sites and not a lot of faith in the government doing that. Is it something you could see the First Nations actually doing, going and taking over? And what would it take to do that? Would it have to be signed off on by the federal government, or they say they're not going to do it, and then? First Nations would, how would that work? I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not sure how that process would work. I know they've started to search a, another residential school in the, in the East. I'm not sure of the process they set up. Um, I'm, I haven't heard exactly what the government has committed to. And of course we would also have to be guided by the families and the survivors. You know, you, we have to really consider their um, their their well being, and um, but I do believe that we need to push, however that is, to have the schools, all the residential schools searched. Do you think at any time there will be accountability accountability taken by the government and by the Catholic Church, or is that what we're working towards? I would like to say yes, but right now at this time I can't. I can't. I can't honestly um, say yes. I, I think that will happen. They've had opportunity for over a week to say something more, and they haven't. And and so I understand that there would probably be there will be all kinds of you know complications with 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 saying that um, at their end, not ours. Um, but I guess it'll we'll have to wait and see. Right. Uh, and I can understand your skepticism. Their promises have been made by governments for years and years and years and years that have that have never been kept. And we can all hope and keep working towards getting our government and the church to do what is right. Um, I do want to switch a little bit because June is National Indigenous History Month. Let's yes. talk a little bit about that and, and what that means to you. That to us, it's, uh, 
you know, it's a celebration of who we are and, and uh, the beautiful culture we have. We, you know, we have such a rich culture in, and it's celebrating us. You know, we're strong and we're resilient and, and we're here. And it, we need, we, we talk about going, going back to where we came from. And, and that is about celebrating who we are as Indigenous people and, and learning, uh, relearning our language, um, relearning our culture and traditions, um, you know, our ceremonies. And so that is part of um, this month is to celebrate that and, and who we are as the original peoples on these lands and um, to show our little ones, be proud of who you are. Um, you, you, are you are such a unique, strong, kind, gentle, smart person. And, and just to celebrate that piece of who we are, you know, we, like, a, we fall, like a, earlier I had mentioned, we follow our seven grandfather teachings and they're a good way of life. And um, we call it Minoba Modzwin, so the good life, we live the good life. And it's it's the life that Creator intended for us, and 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 it's about celebrating all of that and who we are, and 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 of course the history too. Is there an educational aspect to this for those that, that are non-Indigenous, an, or an opportunity for those non-Indigenous to be involved to learn? Absolutely. Um, you know, if it depending on um, you know if you if let's go back to the residential school. There's all kinds of resources out there to learn about residential schools. And there's a couple of movies out there. We Were Children and Indian Horse. And they're, you know, they're very um, eye-opening. And then um, just to learn about Indigenous people, there's, you know, there's many resources there, but ask. You know, I'm always happy to, to answer questions and you know we invite uh pre covid <laughs> or you know we invite people into the community uh, you know attend powwows at your local first nation you're always welcome to do that um or any any events that you know can help you learn we um when we do indigenous day we actually are doing it um be prior to the 21st and what we do is we have a knowledge keepers gathering and we have all our um uh, we have knowledge keepers from each of our uh, Mississauga nations. So we're Michisagi, and there's six uh, First Nations who are Michisagi people. And so we have this uh, knowledge keepers gathering, and it's about, you know, you can learn and about our culture, but who we are, how we, how we survived, like all those pieces that, that um, medicines, uh, um, ceremonies, just uh, language. And, and um, you know, we, we certainly invite people to, yeah, come and learn and, you know, visit your local First Nation and, and ask questions, read up. It's, you know, there's, we're always uh, um, grateful for, you know, for people to, to ask those questions and, and learn. It is, it is very, very important. And that's the way change is going to come. I'm going to leave you with one thing. I was speaking with uh, Janet, Chief Dave Mowat's wife last week, and she said this to me, those 215 spirits have now been released and are around the globe guiding people. So hopefully it's a big difference that's going to be made. Yes, yes. Chief Lori Carr, thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Uh, I certainly look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Miigwech.